win, they would give up. They would tap out, and they would not fight. They'd get blown out every single game, but this team does not do that. They just can't get over the hump, but they're always in ball games. Gary Maxwell, Terry Oglesby, Jeff Harkness, our officials, and off we go from the Farrell Center. There is one key rotational player out tonight because of COVID protocols for Baylor. That is everyday John, Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. But Baylor hopes that he is back soon, perhaps as soon as Saturday against Kansas on the road. Well, Baylor opens with a steal. Macy Oteague got bumped. And a foul is called. Trey Jackson trying to wall him off. See the Baylor starting lineup. Usual starting five that you have seen all season long. If you've been following Baylor, might see more of the, the small lineup with Mark Vidal at the five when Flo Thamba gets a rest because of no Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. Yeah, I mean, the second, the backup big after uh, everyday John is Zach Loveday, and, and we haven't really seen too much of him this season. So if Thamba gets in trouble, Look to see that small ball lineup with Mark Vital, a.k.a. Mr. 9-5, on a lot this game. Mr. 9-5, I got to hear the explanation behind that. You want to hear it now, you want to hear it later? No, I want to hear it now. <laughs> Solomon Young oh. has his shot rejected by Flo Thamba. Out of bounds, it'll stay with Iowa State, 9 on the timer. Well, the explanation for Mr. 9-5 is 95% of the game, as you see this block right here, 95% of the game is this. What you do on the defensive end, what do you do when you die for loose balls? Ha! Because only 5% of the game is scoring. Everything else is 90 to 95% of the game, and that's what Mark prides himself in. He wants to be Mr. 95, 95% to do the little things. Now he does all the dirty work. Macy Oteague in and out from distance. So a couple of steals here in the first minute plus for Baylor defensively, but a couple of missed shots by Macy Oteague. Baylor's first practice coming out of the COVID protocols was two days ago. Yes, Sunday. You know, you might compare it to Michigan, number three in the country, coming off a 23-day hiatus. Solomon Young with the offensive rebound, another block by Thamba. But Michigan, at least, did not have a single positive test, and they had a full week of practice before they returned against Wisconsin a couple of weeks ago. Man, Ted, I couldn't even imagine sitting out for 21 days middle of the season. That sounds like something that's unheard of. Trey Jackson buries the three for Iowa State. Cyclones on the board first. Jackson just a 29% three-point shooter. Getting the start along with Tyler Harris, number one for Iowa State. Javen Johnson and Jaden Walker will come off the bench for the Cyclones after they were benched in the second half against Oklahoma. Nice feed. Thumb of the finish. Davion Mitchell found him. Davion Mitchell's play has improved so much. But I, I think it's been expected. He, he puts in the work, and you saw right there, the quick hesitation. It's super hard to keep that kid out the paint. His teammates say they just see a more confident Mitchell this season. And the numbers bear that out. Jalen Coleman lands with the basket for Iowa State. He has been really hot, the one constant for Iowa State the last four games. He has played really, really well because his confidence is starting to grow. He's the one person on the team, talking to Coach Prone, that, that can consistently make shots. And they need somebody to be able to knock down shots. And they, he thinks oftentimes that Jalen Coleman lands, J. Cole is a little too passive. He passes up shots where he should shoot. And he needs to get going if they want any chance to win this game. Coleman lands averaging 17 and a half points the last four games for Iowa State. Foul was on Tyler Harris, his first. And now foul on Baylor. Flo Thamba trying to set the screen. Now here's, here's where the game can get interesting. When you have Mark at the five and you have Flo on the bench because you have no everyday John to put Matt at the four, can they rebound well enough with Iowa State? Will Iowa State be able to take advantage inside? Because if Mark gets in foul trouble, then the next answer at the five is Matt Meyer. And will Matt Meyer be able to go down there and guard Solomon Young? We don't know. I don't know. But we'll find out. This game should be interesting because of that one aspect right there. Meyer's in the game now, along with Adam Flagler, perhaps the sixth man of the year in the Big 12 this season. Transfer from Presbyterian. Mitchell against Harris. Oh, oh he hits and he hits. Mm. It's a tough bucket being able to draw the contact and hang in the air and still get it. 
That's tough. Mitchell rising up draft boards. First round pick projected by ESPN, along with his teammate Jared Butler. Tyler Harris, the three point gunner, cans a three. Oh, Meyer slipped. Trying to find Vital. And out of bounds to Iowa State. This is exactly what Scott Drew told us at shoot around. He was concerned. How many turnovers are we going to have? We're just not quite in rhythm coming out of the break. Yeah, you see it right there. there there's a little bit of this rust. I mean, I don't think anybody on Baylor's Baylor staff expects this game to be a blowout. I think they expect this game to be close because they know that they're coming off a stupid long break. So I think everybody knows it's going to be a good game. They just want to be able to shake it off so they can try to get this dub. Too strong from Coleman Lance. Solomon Young offensive rebound. Now the ball is loose. And you got a rugby scrum forming. A tie up. And Baylor ball with the arrow. Oh, you see Iowa State closer look. It's funny, the last time they won a Big 12 game, we were in Ames calling it a victory <laughs> over TCU February of last year, trying to avoid their first winless conference season since they were in the Big Six oh, back wow. in 1937. Oh, wow. The Iowa State teams that I played against when I was here at Baylor with the Taylor Horton Tuckers and the George Niang and... The Mario Shayox. Sure. Those teams were nowhere near like this, and I would have never thought I'd ever see Iowa State losing basketball games like this. Off the spin, Jalen Coleman lands. Iowa State cashing in on the turnover. It's a 10 to 4 lead for the Cyclones. Meyer off the up fake. Behind the back to Vital, and it's ripped away by Tyler Harris. Rashir Bolton is Iowa State's leading scorer. Hasn't put up a shot yet. Coleman Lance is fouled inside. And that brings us to our first official timeout. Well, number two in the country, but rusty as expected after three. Imagine being stuck in my room for 21 days. Not being able to do anything, not being able to practice, middle of the season. I'm watching other teams play, and we should be out there playing. It affects them more than just physically. It affects them mentally. And I feel like we don't touch on that topic enough. You have seen some coaches bang that drum, especially earlier in the season. But, yes, it still needs to be talked about here in late February as we reach near the end of the season. Play the shot clock, Bolton. Mm. Here comes Teague for Baylor. Bears two of six from the floor. They've missed all three of their shots from downtown. Trailing Iowa State 10 to 4. Mitchell leaning in. Got his own miss. Pass. To LJ Cryer, the freshman off target. Cryer did not play in Baylor's last game three weeks ago against Texas. But figured to get more playing time tonight. Harris, that's a swish, a triple for the transfer from Memphis, his second three. Tyler Harris can play. I mean, he, we saw this at Memphis. The kid was good. I hosted him on his visit when he came to Baylor. The kid is talented. I mean, he, he's kind of small, but he's talented and he's fearless. And right now he's showing it. How did that visit go? He ended up at Iowa State. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he, he technically... <laughs> he Trey tried, Jackson with the layup. <laughs> you trying to say I'm a bad host? No, I, you said it. I did <laughs> Wow. <laughs> he, he ended up going to Memphis because of Penny Hardaway and that, yes. that close connection. Absolutely. But he He's told me Memphis. he told me he was thinking about, but you know, Baylor was a close second. So I think the visit was solid. So a 15 to 4 lead for Iowa State. Yes, a double digit lead against undefeated Baylor. Even as early as it is. Teague the fall away. Over oh. Bolton, that's pure. Maceo Teague with his first bucket. It's a tough bucket right now. It just seems like they have to shake the rest off and, and get the ball moving. It seems like the ball is sticking a little too much right now. Harris feeling it. He's got another one. His third three in the first seven minutes of the game. Timeout, Baylor. 
Burke said it about Sunday's practice for Baylor. Again, their first practice coming out of the COVID hiatus. A lot of shots were short. We had a lot of turnovers. I don't feel like we forgot how to play, but everyone expected that they ju they wouldn't just hit the ground running tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's 21 days. That's pretty much having to start from square one. Feet inside, low Bamba with the slam. I said that's a good easy two points. A good slip play right there to get, get some offense going. But yeah, it's a 21 day break. I mean, you basically starting from square one. Guys have to get back in shape and everything. Offensive foul, George Condit. So Thamba with the dunk at one end, and he takes the charge at the other. Again, no Jonathan Chamwa Chachua for Baylor tonight because of COVID protocols. A little pressure from Iowa State. What happened? Now, we are way high up yeah. at the Farrell Center. We're not courtside. We can't listen in like we usually do. Hey, that's the pandemic for you. Not sure what the stoppage was about. So a five-second call, Iowa State takes it, and they score it just like that with Bolton. See, that's a perfect example. Davion Mitchell, one of the best defenders in the country, just got backdoored and face cut to an easy layup. That never happens when he's on point, when, he, when he's back in the rhythm. It's going to take them a minute, but I think they'll bounce back. But that, that's a perfect example right there. Davion Mitchell never allows that. Mitchell knocks down the three. Atoning for that at the other end. Mitchell with five. And now a foul on Iowa State. And Condit picks up his second here at the offensive end. Davion Mitchell showing why he has been one of the potential All-American candidates. His three-point percentage has skyrocketed. And it's a tribute to him. As hard as he works, literally. When I was here, he'd be in the gym, not even exaggerating, about six to seven hours a day, not including practice. From 32% from downtown last year to 49%. That's just absurd. Wait a minute. Oh, a turnover. Jackson with the steal. Baylor just doesn't look like Baylor. Mitchell the dive. Out of bounds. And an official timeout. Iowa State then uh, like we've never been off of a layoff. So I just feel like we're gonna come in um, like nothing happened. Yeah, it, it's been rough, right? And what do you expect? Yes, you're down nine. They, they were down by 12 a moment ago, but this is how it's gonna be as Baylor tries to find its legs. Yeah, I mean, I think it just boils down to, to toughness, mental toughness. Now, I think the thing that makes Baylor so good is that they have older players who can handle this, which is why I think, oh, I thought he was going to make another one, which is why I think you, you're seeing schools like Duke, schools like Kansas, not Kansas, Kentucky, struggle because they got younger players who have not been able to handle this well. Jared Butler tied up. Iowa State takes possession with the arrow. Butler has not scored. In fact, he has not registered a field goal attempt yet. Iowa State 8 of 15 from the field and 4 of 5 from 3. They were down 21 in the first half against Oklahoma Saturday. Came back to take the lead in the second half before eventually falling. Down low, Solomon Young. Offensive foul, Flo Thamba again taking the charge. Now, nah, I'm going to be that guy. I don't think that's a charge. Okay. I, 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 I don't think that's a charge. Uh, I mean, he, he might have beat him to the spot of clearing either way. Me personally, I think as a big man, if you consistently take charges, to, to me personally, that's just... I'm not gonna say the word I want to say, but it, it, it's just not how I, <laughs> that's just not how I would 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 advocate playing the, bas the basketball game. So I want to hear that word later. <laughs> Probably can't say it though. Tend to shoot for Mitchell. Take defended by Coleman Lance. Nifty move to get free. Couldn't convert. Iowa State in transition. 
Oh, but Lance. Oh. That's swatted by Feigl. Oh. Maybe that can energize Baylor here at home. Hey, we caught him Mr. 9 5 at the beginning for a reason. And this is why. Hustle plays, getting back, sprinting full speed for the monster block. Mr. 95, Mr. Do It All, you call him whatever. He's going to do all the little things for your team and help you win ball games. Mark Vital. Rashir Bolton, the seventh leading scorer in the Big 12, just under 16 points per game. Looking for Young. Vital has it for Baylor. Butler. No. Offensive foul. Mm. Whistles are blowing tonight. That's not a charge. Yeah. Uh, that's a block. He was moving. Didn't hit him square in the chest. That, that's a bad call. It's the eighth turnover of the game for Baylor. Check it, the ninth. Oh, Harris almost lost Whoa. it, and he scoops it in. Tyler Harris in double figures with 11. And that thing you got to take into consideration when they when they use the ball screen, Iowa State. Flo Thamba's having to do so much running. They're trying to purposely get Flo Thamba tired by sprinting Solomon Young up and forcing him not to just sprint, but also guard the ball screen. Mitchell missed from close range. Harris. Bolton against Butler. Finds a cutting Jalen Coleman lands. What a find by Bolton. Lothamba has his work cut in tonight because if I'm Iowa State, I am going to run a ball screen every single time and make Flo guard multiple ball screen actions because he's the only big on the court and the only big Baylor has available tonight. Iowa State with its largest lead. Thamba missing the mid-range. Tyler Harris tried to save it. He could not. Baylor ball. Well, upcoming events involving Iowa State here on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. week from today, number 14, Texas in Ames, game that was rescheduled. Also, a week from Thursday, Iowa State and Texas Tech. And then a week from Saturday, Farmageddon round two, Iowa State and Kansas State. Sign up now, ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Mitchell, too strong, vital, offensive rebound. He couldn't put it in. Just hard to recognize Baylor in this first half, but again, it has been three weeks. Oh. Harris got free. Young, the offensive board. Fresh 20 seconds for Iowa State. Solomon Young got that board because Flo Thamba's tired right now because they're constantly putting him in screen, ball screen situations. And Iowa State has a smart game plan by setting the ball screen towards the baseline instead of setting it towards the sideline because Baylor likes to send everything to a side. Another timeout for Scott Drew and Baylor. They're in a fifth losing mindset. We still have pride. We're still working. They just have not been able to get over the hump. I think... Coach Prone is 110% fully responsible for that because a lot of times coaches would have given up on their teams. However, Coach Prone today in shoot around, he was still coaching them hard. He was coaching Tyler Harris super hard. He made like a turnover, a bad pass in, in a drill with no defense, and he coached him super hard and told him, Come on, Tyler, you're better than that. And he's still fully invested and wants his team to succeed because he thinks his team is good and he thinks that, that this team has. I mean, maybe not potential to you know, do anything in the postseason, but they're still good and they're still talented. Adam Flagler with the putback, his first points. Baylor was down 15 coming out of the timeout, their largest deficit of the season. And yes, against the team that has lost 12 in a row, 
and whose only two wins this year are against Arkansas Pine Bluff and Jackson State, both out of the swag. End of the shot clock, Bolton mm. hits the triple. Rashir Bolton, just a 31% three-point shooter, but he extends the lead. And that's a good sign right there for the Cyclones. Rashir Bolton has been struggling to shoot the three in the last two games, especially only shooting 31 in a year. But that's a really good sign that he's knocking down those. Back-to-back -back buckets for Adam Flagler. Maybe he can give Baylor that jolt that Bears fans are used to seeing. Oh. oh, it goes down again from the outside. Tyler Harris with his fourth. The Cyclones are six of seven from beyond the arc. And one thing that happens when you let people start making shots on you, they get more and more confidence. Adam, Adam Flagler has another three. He's slowly gaining his confidence right now. That's seven in a row for Flagler. A transfer from Presbyterian. Converter will be the sixth man of the year in the league, just like Devontae Bandu was for Baylor last season. Post touch for Solomon Young. Oh, he throws it over the head of Harris. You know, Tyler Harris is only 5'9". Even if he was 6'9", that would probably be a turnover. That was a horrible pass. I mean, Solomon Young right there, he should not look to pass. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You got four shooters spread around you. It's one-on-one, -on -one, Solomon Young. You're going against Mark Bottle, who's only 6'4", probably at, at best. You're 6'8", 6 6'9", you have the height advantage. Right hand hook over it. Easy two points. Fire. Flips oh. it in. Matt Meyer with his first bucket. Is Matt Meyer rocking a mullet right now? You know, it was always floppy hair for Meyer, but coming out of the COVID hiatus, it's a mullet for sure. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at the defense right here by Mark Vidal. Trying to stick with Bolton. Floater off the mark from Javen Johnson. On the break, Meyer to Pryor for two. Timeout. Baylor is within 10. Then cut down by another four. Then before you know it, single digits by halftime. If it's single digits by halftime, then second half, there's a long basketball game. 20 minutes is a long time. So you have to slowly cut it down. You're not going to get back in the game on just two possessions. Baylor has scored seven in a row. Bolton on the drive. Foul is called on Davion Mitchell, his first. The biggest thing, though, Ted, is you, you got to get stops. Regardless of what you're talking about, you have to get stops on the defensive end if you want to get back in any ball game. The official wants Flo Thamba and Macy Oteek to back up their chairs beyond the end line and <laughs> give Bolton some room to inbound. Again, final working so hard defensively. Harris against Flagler. Harris has 14 here in the first half. Got the step. Tip in by Johnson, no basket. That ball was in the cylinder. That's what I think. That's why I think Tyler Harris can be so effective, and he can really help this team. Putting the ball on the floor and be able to make plays. Because right now, I think he settles too much. He shoots way too many threes. You can't really guard him because it's his speed and his quickness. He needs to be able to put the ball on the floor and create for his teammates. Fryer the step back. That's short. Vital tracks it down. Lost it going up. And he's fouled. Foul called on the floor. And that's number two on Solomon Young. You 
know, mentioned Michigan earlier coming back from their own three week long COVID hiatus. Remember, they were down 12 at the half against Wisconsin on the road, came back to win. They've won three straight, of course, since coming back to play. Didn't look pretty in that first half, just like it has it for Baylor here tonight. Oh, oh Flagler and Harris collide. And Harris commits the foul. That's his second. He's, they're sharing the ball. One thing that this team could really get better at doing. Making plays for others and sharing the rock, getting each other easy shots. They're doing that tonight, shooting 86% as a result. Six of seven. Harris is four of five. Adam Flagler at the line for Baylor coming out of the timeout, which is now back to within single digits. Baylor undefeated on the year, coming back from their three-week COVID hiatus, down by as many as 17 in this first half. It's a 9-0 run for Baylor. And all nine points supplied by Adam Flagler. A vital out on the perimeter against Bolton. Turnover. Mark Vidal just makes it so hard. This is the beginning of the game. When we have Flo Thamba running up there, he literally had to hedge every single time, so of course he'd be tired. But Mark Vidal can guard those perimeter players. Mark Vidal is basically a guard himself. So now you're going up against another guard instead of a post player. Vidal set the screen for Flagler, who couldn't hit the three. State shooting 54% in this first half overall, including six of seven from three. Now it's Teague on Bolton. Leads Iowa State in scoring, rebounding, and assist, and Bolton banks it in. You know, I don't think sure Bolton just gets the love that he needs to get. The kid is averaging 16 points, five rebounds, and four assists a game. I mean, granted, you got to have a one, but that's an impressive stat line. Flagler in his own zip code. He splashes in the three. Bolton trying to drop it off. Butler has it for the Bears. Back to Flagler, the high okay. end. On the one arm rebound by Condon. Tangled up with Vital. And the foul goes against Vital. Good pass right here. Jared Butler's definitely improved his passing and this man right here has got Baylor going right now. Knocking it down from all over, giving Baylor that spark off the bench that they much needed. Well, Scott Drew has said it. Jared Butler has too. With this team, it can be anyone's night. Yeah. And over the last five plus minute, minutes, it has been Adam Flagler who is carrying Baylor offensively. Ted, they get 30 points from their bench. That's unheard of. Who? who I don't think I've ever heard of a team that can get 30 points from their bench on a night-in, night-out basis. And guys who could start on any other team in the league, perhaps the country and Flagler and Meyer and others. Mm. Oh, Bolton again from deep. His second three. The lead is back to 10. Jared Butler still has not registered a field goal attempt. There it is right on cue. And the three rolls in. Final on Coleman lands. Off the fake. Team tracks it down for Baylor. Tapped out by the freshman, Jaden Walker. It'll stay with Baylor. Huh. Final checks out. Meyer comes back on. Now, this would be interesting because will Matt Meyer be able to go down there yes. and rebound with George Condit is what we need to be looking at right now. What would dictate the last minute of this game? This is the super small lineup for Baylor. Meyer had it stripped. Minute remaining in the half. Well, 
go for two for one right here. Try to get Solomon Young back in the game. You can end on an easy bucket for Solomon Young while Matt Myers guarding. Five to shoot for Bolton against Teague. I don't like that shot. That's a brick. It's a horrible shot. Wasted possession. No movement. No ball. No no paint. The ball gets to the paint. That was a bad possession right there. Butler. Nice ball movement. Oh, Butler to Mitchell to Teague for two. Shot clock is dark. About 2,500 on hand, 25% capacity here at the Farrell Center. Making some noise. Smart. Bolton was in trouble. Coleman lands. Off the mark. So Baylor in their return to play. Battles back from down 17 at one point. And now Scott Drew's team trails. COVID-19 protocols. They trail the last place team in the Big 12, Iowa State, by five. But they were down by as many as 17. King, you think the message is simple? Like, hey, glad we got that half out of the way. Now we're in the flow. Let's go. Hey, most definitely. They, they, they ended the half really well by getting a spark off the bench. But for Iowa State, they just have to take care of the basketball. And, make, and when I say take care, not turn, not not turn the ball over, but take better shots. Yeah. Their last two possessions were absolutely horrible. A couple of missed threes. One by Bolton near the end of the shot clock. Jared Butler with the three. Just his second shot of the game. He has made both from distance. It's a great sign. Do you think Butler will be a little more aggressive now in the second half? Looking for his shot? Yeah, he has to be. He has to be more aggressive because I think that if he's not aggressive, I don't think that they can complete this off. I mean, I, I think he personally has to get going. But I would say on the flip side, Solomon Young has to get going because the lack of depth for the bigs that Baylor does not have right now, Solomon Young has to get going because they don't have too many answers for him. In and out from Jalen Coleman lands. Yes, for Baylor, Jonathan Chamwa, Chachua, everyday John out because of COVID protocols. The one player that's in the rotation who is out tonight. Overall, the Bears do not have three players available. Teague, no. Young with the rebound. Young has not scored, but he's been solid on the glass. Tyler Harris leads all scorers. Harris, the Memphis transfer, now with 16, more than double his season average. Hey, that, that was a tough finish right there to hang in the air. Money from Jared Butler, his third three. And the Bears are within a point. That rest is slowly starting to come off from, for, for the Bears. Coleman lands around the screen. Seven to shoot. Tyler Harris. Off the mark this time. Harris made his first four threes. He's missed his last two. Butler to the rack. Challenged by Young. It's not there. Thamba couldn't put it back in. Vital has it. Shot clock resets. Mitchell puts it up. Off the mark, Davion Mitchell, now 2 of 8 from the floor, but vital with the offensive board, and he's fouled. With Iowa State playing this four-guard lineup, somebody has to put a body on Mark Vital. Jared Butler, doing what Jared Butler does. One of the five finalists for the Bob Cousy Award, and starting to show you why. Best point guard in America, Butler, off the mark here. This time a tie-up. Baylor ball with the arrow. Yes, the other finalists, Kate Cunningham, Jalen Suggs, Colin Gillespie of Villanova, Ayo Dosumu of Illinois, along with Butler, that award that goes to the best point guard in the country. That's a pretty impressive list right there. A lot of guys who are very talented that we will see on the next level on that list. Who would get your vote of those five this year? <laughs> You know, I'm partially biased because Jared, Jared Butler is like one of my best friends. So <laughs> no like my, surprise. That's like my little brother. But non-biased opinion had to go out of him or, or Jalen Suggs. I mean, you can make an argument for Kay Cunningham just because 
Oklahoma State, what he's doing with them, but it has to be out of Jalen Suggs or, or Jared. Bolton gives it up. No good from Jalen Coleman lands. And now Butler gets to direct traffic. Moving screen. Yep. Thamba trying to create space for Butler. But the foul is called. That's his second. And so Thamba exits, and Matthew Meyer comes in again. No everyday John who usually splits that five spot with Thamba. So Meyer comes in to join Vital in the front court. This is the dangerous lineup for Iowa State as far as Baylor goes because this is the lineup that they got back in the game with where they have flag on the court. But with Mark Vital at the five, that's what you have to do. If they cannot get the ball into Solomon Young and let him take advantage, Iowa State has no chance. Young with his first bucket. Butler one-on-one -on -one against Coleman lands and he draws the foul two shots coming for Jared Butler the junior from Reserve Louisiana tested the NBA waters a year ago King you got the feedback you got to cut down on your turnovers you have to improve as a shooter he has done that and then some and that's why you see him on the mock drafts as a late first round pick yeah because on the next level he's gonna have to be a point guard and I think my senior year, that's one area he struggled. He was a two guard, and he really was. He tried to pass, but he really wasn't a elite passer. The next year, he got better. This year, he's improved and almost hit a complete 180. He's he's a really really good passer. Sees the floor better, but not just being able to see because I think he always had vision, but being able to execute once he sees. He's improved in that area and shot selection. He he, I'm I'm proud of him to be honest. Bolton racing ahead. The flip oh, is good tough. for Rashir Bolton. Yeah, awkward angle. Yeah, tough finish right there. But Bolton made it work. Could have been an and one. Meyer off the spin. And he is fouled. Trey Jackson trying to poke it free. And a timeout. Here in Waco. Baylor still is one incredible coach. Probably one of the best assistants out there from what I've heard. I mean, look at what he started to educate, unify. They talk about things like financial literacy and, and trying to help educate on issues that were not talked about before this year. And I think that's huge because in this time, we need that more than ever. And kudos to Danielle Robinson for doing that and taking that step to, to start this and lead this. Robinson was previously with Iowa State under Greg McDermott about a decade ago rejoined the staff a couple of years back Of course remember two years ago Iowa State won the Big 12 tournament mm -hmm. and he, I mean, he had a lot to do with it. Yes, he, he recruited a lot of those guys that you saw on the court I mean, I, I think I think personally he's one of the best assistants not only in the Big 12 but in the country So a four-point lead for Iowa State which is led by as many as 17 they have looked so sharp tonight, and it's all about been stretches against some of the top teams in the Big 12 as Butler misses from the outside. They have taken West Virginia to the limit. Oklahoma as well. They have not broken through yet. They have a chance to do that here tonight. Jackson off the mark for the Cyclones. Iowa State's now one of their last eight from three. Mm. Butler guides it in for Baylor. Bears to within two now. Baylor has not led tonight in their return from the COVID pause. Jared Butler is so hard to guard because he always plays out of a hesitation. And that hesitation allows him to read what his defense is, what his defender is going to do. Jalen Coleman lands. That's a two. Coleman lands now with a tough shooting night for him. Four of 11. But the lead back to four. That's, a, that's all the bait. Davion and Jared do the same thing. They both play out that, that hesitation right there. They'll get you in their pause to see how you react to it, and they'll make their move based off what you do as a defender, which is why they're super hard to guard. Yeah, how tough is that? What is the counter then, trying to stay in front? 
as Coleman lands, puts down another one. You, honestly, you just have to do your best to not to not foul because they're going to get the angle on you. So you have to be able to stay on their hip, ride their hip, and not swipe down, not foul, and let the big slide over to try to contest that. But take away the jumper first and foremost, but let the big clean up everything else. Flagler, a corner triple. He gave Baylor a spark at the end of the first half. He brings Baylor to within one here. I do not like Iowa State running ball screens with Mark Bottle in the game. Oh, it ends up with a three by Javen Johnson, his first points tonight. Big shout to Mark Bottle at the five. Iowa State should run no ball screens because you're just getting a switch and you're making it honestly harder for the guard when they get the ball. Mitchell, no, as we've seen, Vital can handle himself just fine yeah. on the perimeter. <laughs> He's probably almost, if not a better defender, other than Davion Mitchell, he's probably the second best defender on the court. So when you switch and you get the ball screen, you're going against the, the second best defender on the court. So Baylor ball after the tie up. Here is Flagler with 15 points on five of eight shooting. Butler. Condit the extra pass. Mm. Johnson could not knock it down this time. I see what George kind of did right there, but you got to get that layup. He was wide open. Yeah, you got to get that layup. Why did he pass that up? And Teague is fouled. That comes before the shot. Well, upcoming Baylor events on Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Kim Mulkey's Lady Bears ranked seventh in the country against Oklahoma State tomorrow. Also tomorrow, Baylor's softball team against UT Arlington. And Saturday, the Baylor women against Kansas State. Check it out, ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Of course, a few more games put on the schedule on the men's side. That buffer week before the conference tournament games being rescheduled. Flagler puts it in. Adam Flagler, just imagine where Baylor would be without him tonight. Coleman lands, got his feet set, didn't drop. This is a smart move by, by, by Coach Drew right here. He subbed Mark Vidal at the game when they saw that George Condit was the five man because George Condit is not a threat down low to score. So Matt Meyer does, does not have to guard because every time Condit is guarding him, he's looking to pass as opposed to score. Bolton right flips there. it in with a foul. Just as Baylor creeps closer again, it's Rashir Bolton with a chance at a three point play. Rashir Bolton is good, he's talented. Like I said, he's averaging 16, 5, and 4. If anybody else put those numbers up on the team that wins, you view him at a completely different light. But because his team is losing, he does not get the credit that he deserves. This kid can hold. He's a baller for real. The, the numbers, just the numbers, aren't that far off from what Jared Butler does for Baylor. Again, very different players, not comparing the two. But Bolton has to produce like that night after night for Iowa State. He is that new lead guard with Tyrese Halliburton in the NBA. I mean, only two areas where I see could see improvement is his three-point shooting and his assist turnover ratio. I mean, as a point guard, you have to have a better assist to turnover ratio. Can't be one-to-one. -one. And your three-point shooting, shooting 31 percent, it's not good enough. You got you got to fix that. But other than that, his numbers are very impressive. Macy Oteek scoops it in for Baylor. Teague has had a rough go tonight. Just three of nine from the floor. Now six points. Bolton again. Tough shot against the freshman L.J. Cryer. Bolton gets buckets. He averages 16, and we're seeing why. Dude is a killer for real. Teague in oh, the lane. So Another flip by Teague. Got in the paint, and he finished. I don't think people really understand how skilled of a layup that is. To keep the defender on your hip and be able to go without touching the ball in the opposite hand, 
flip it up off the opposite leg. That's super, super tough. Guy can get lost in the shuffle at times with the way Butler and Mitchell have played this season. Coleman lands off balance. Baylor has it. Flagler to the cup. Oh, rejected. Johnson and Jackson were there defensively for Iowa State. Condit fumbled it, picked it up, and laid it in. Again, Iowa State still keeping Baylor at arm's length. Baylor has not led tonight as we approach the midway mark of the second half. And this is the thing we see out of this Iowa State team. They, they, they do this often. They, they get these leads, able to compete, but can they get over that hump to finish the ball game is the question that has not been answered. And, and so far, every other game before this has been no. Flo Thamba will be in the line on the timeout. Jared Butler, the All-American, and could very well be the Big 12 Player of the Year. You talk about courage, King, stepping on that stage in front of that microphone, showing leadership, being the change, as we all have heard about over the last year plus. I mean, that, that's just who he is as a person. That's who he's becoming as a man. Jared Butler has never been afraid to speak his mind, speak what he really believes, and, you know, just truly fight for what he stands for. And, and that's super encouraging to see. I mean, he's, he didn't have to do that. The, all the athletes at Baylor didn't have to do that. They could be preparing in the gym, preparing whatever, whatever their sport is, but they take the time out because it's what they really, truly believe and what they want to see. And you got to be the change you want to see, and that's very important. Wow. Flo Thamba rejecting Tyler Harris, but the whistle blows. And for Thamba, that's his third. Tyler Harris, this is the Tyler Harris I like to see. I like to see Tyler Harris put the ball on the floor and be able to create plays, whether that's for himself or whether that's for his teammates. This is what he needs to do. This is what he should have been doing all year instead of settling for so many threes because he's more than just a three-point shooter. This kid can hoop and he can get to the rim he's very hard to guard. Iowa State has not won a game since December 20th at home against Jackson State. 12 consecutive losses, 0-13 in the Big 12. Can you imagine what this would mean to them? And yes, there's a lot of time left against the number two team in the country. But especially for a coach whose job security is being questioned, Steve Prohm, they are right in this, a five-point lead with just over 10 minutes to play. Yeah, I mean, that would be huge for him. Great pass right there. Bamba, but, the throwdown for Baylor. It'll be huge, but they have to be able to get over this hump. This might be the game where they can, but they have to be able to get over this hump. They led Baylor by as many as 17 in the first half. Baylor looked awfully ragged in that first half, coming off the COVID break mm. of 21 days. Johnson off the mark. You gotta hit those if you're open. You don't see too many open looks against this team. You've got to be able to hit those. Teague, again, a scoop. Condit with the block. That was impressive. Being able to block the shot and save it. And he'll hustle back into your frame right there. Harris has 17 for Iowa State. One short of his season high. Tie up. And Iowa State ball with the alternating possession. It looked like it was a lot of kinds. It looked like it was probably a foul to me. More so than a tie-up. What are you looking for from Iowa State offensively right now? Right now, I'm looking to go ahead float Thamba. I'm looking to put him in a lot of pick-and-roll situations. And if they switch, be able to take advantage of the mismatch down low with Condit. I know he's not a scorer, but right now, your team needs you to be. Coleman Lance now 5 of 15. Here's Butler. Oh, putting that, on an exhibition against Harris. Couldn't hit the shot. That is textbook defense. You talk about how to guard a counter right there? Tyler Harris just showed you right there how to guard that counter. Offensive foul against Iowa State. That's a good call. 
when you pass the ball, a lot of people think you can do whatever you want to do and the refs don't look. Nope, when you pass the ball, you still have to come to a complete stop because if not, you will get that charge called on you every single time. Good play right there by Davion Mitchell. And Mitchell's so savvy, right, as a defender. We know his resume. Man, I know firsthand experience. Davion Mitchell showed me how good of a defender he was when I was here, going up against him in practice every single day when he was on scout team here in Maceo. Yeah, the year that he sat out, right? Yeah. That's for him from Auburn. Good defense. Teague picked up the dribble. Seven to shoot for Baylor. Here is Flagler. Bullseye! A three! We are tied at 58. That's a tough shot right there. That's a tough shot and a big shot. Harris looking oh. for an answer. Give it to him. Tyler Harris puts Iowa State back in front. Fearless. No matter how tall, fearless. That is what he is. Harris now five of seven from long range. Mitchell, the step on Coleman lands, blocked again, Condit. Harris, heat check. You gotta shoot that one. Ball is loose, out of bounds. Iowa State ball. At a timeout. Yes, drama with the very. Oh, playing well. Jalen Coleman lands it a few. Javon Johnson even. They're confident right now. And because they're confident, that's why they're in the game. Now, the big question, will they get over that hump and be able to finish it? Who knows? We'll see. Now, Steve Prohm told us earlier today, King, it's just the little things. The margin for error for us is so low. And listen, we can talk about all the problems of this season, the youth, the inexperience, injuries, COVID protocols. They have a three-point lead over undefeated Baylor in the final seven minutes. Oh. And now it's a five-point lead. Javon Johnson on the lob. That's one of them shots where you shoot it and you're like, oh, that was a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Butler, nine of his 12, coming here in the second half. Giving it up to Mitchell. Mitchell slashes in for two. Davion Mitchell now with nine. Almost threw it away. Jackson. Harris against the best on-ball defender in the country. Mitchell staying in front of him, and he forces the travel. And that right there is why he's in the running for defensive national defensive player of the year. His ability to slide his feet, slide his feet. Tyler Harris is 5'9". He automatically is lower than Davion Mitchell and lower than everybody he plays against. So it's harder because he gets the advantage because the low man wins. Davion Mitchell is able to cut him off. Impressive. Butler fouled before the shot. And Baylor is in the bonus. One and one coming up for Butler. 76% on the year. One of two at the line tonight. This is what makes it hard to play against Baylor. When you get in the bonus, they're, such, they're so good at isolation basketball. Forcing you to guard them one-on-one, -on -one, it's hard. <laughs> so you have a knack to want to reach. You have a knack to, to want to foul. And they're able to draw fouls because it's hard to stop them. So they're, they're so good one-on-one -on -one players. This might be the turning point for Baylor right now. Approaching the six-minute mark. Two-point lead for Iowa State. Got to look in the counter right now. Against a guard in Flagler. Forced in the W and pass out of that. Gave it up. Bolton is fouled. Nice look by Condon when T came over. And it leads to free throws. Yeah, right now you have to get the switch. You have to get Vital off of Condit because Vital can guard Condit because Condit's not a scorer. But when the guard switches on to him, you have to look to Condit not to be a scorer. If he can score, that's cool. That's two points. But look for it to be a passer because you have to double. And when you double, 
somebody has to cut, you can find the open man and get easy shots that way. So I think they have to get the switch, get Vital off of Condit, and get make Condit become a playmaker in the post. Bolton makes them both. Four-point lead for the Cyclones. Trying to avoid becoming the first winless team in the Big 12 since TCU in 2014. Here's Teague. Mitchell looking to break down Trey Jackson. Flagler inside the arc. Vital wrestling for it. Foul called against Iowa State. That was impressive right there from Trey Jackson. They tried to put him on an island, but Trey Jackson did a great job of keeping Davion Mitchell in front of him. Because when you keep your man in front of you, it eliminates others having to help. Great job by Trey Jackson right there. Well, upcoming events here on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Some of those rescheduled games. TCU, Texas Tech on Tuesday. TCU and number 10 West Virginia on Thursday. And then a week from Sunday, Texas and TCU. ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Sign up. Vital misses the front end of the one and one. He has not scored tonight, but he does have 12 rebounds. That's a Mark Vital line for you. Now a steal for Baylor. Butler giving it up. Flagler no. And a foul on the Cyclones inside. Vital got knocked down by Condit. That's just two bad plays right there. Condit was wide open on the cut right there. Rashir Bowden over dribbled. Then tried to pass it to it last minute. Then come down, put them at the free throw line. Condit pushing Mark right there. You didn't even have to push right there. Two bad plays by Iowa State, and that is why they don't get over that hump because they make bad plays like that. It's the definition of the little things, yes. right? Exactly. The little things matter, and the little things is what gets you wins in the Big 12. Vital missed the front end a moment ago. Just a 56% foul shooter. Two shots here. Missed the first here. Now, this is an area of Mark Vidal's game where I just think he has to improve. Like, yeah. he, just, he just has to improve. He, per, he plays so hard that he ends up at the free throw line all the time. So he has to be able to become at least a 70% free throw shooter. Then we can start talking about moving back to the three-point line. Yeah. Because he, then he has to be able to yes. knock down the three ball because he's only 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, right. You can't play the four or the three shooting 20% or whatever he shoots from three. Vital finally on the scoreboard. Now middle, Vital pokes it away. In transition, he lays it home. Baylor back to within one. And this is when Iowa State gets in trouble. Steve Brom wisely calls time. Talk about getting over the hump. Iowa State searching for its first win. Baylor searching for it for him. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what you expect. A 21-day break, you have rust. You're not going to be the same team you were when you just got done playing. However, this is a great test for this team because they have not been within 10 or, or they, they, they won every game by over 8 points. With that being said, this test your team get you to the very end because they really haven't been tested before today like that. So therefore, this game will show what kind of team you have when you come when March Madness comes and you run across these tests all the time. Coleman lands against T. Couldn't bank it in. Rebound. Baylor searching for their first lead tonight. Macy Oteague fouled. He can put Baylor on top at the line. You know, Baylor had not trailed in a game inside the final seven minutes of regulation. And, of course, here they are with 4.26 to go. Macy Oteague just has a knack for getting fouled. And trust me, I have experienced this in practice for a whole season. The kid is really good, really crafty at getting to the free throw line. He evens things at 65. Teague fueled by the fact that he has never played in the NCAA tournament. Transfer from UNC Asheville. And for the first time, Baylor has the lead. 
Now for Iowa State, this is where you can show growth. If you can show growth or, or continue to go down the same trend that you have continued to go on because right now, things are getting tight. Can you do what you need to do? Execute the plays and make shots at the end of the game. Coleman lands, couldn't hit the shot there. Here's Butler. Teague. Oh, travel pretty ball. move, yeah, but yeah, a travel. Yeah, he, the extra he step. He on that one. Yeah, good call by the ref right there. With Iowa State and Mark Vidal being in the game, I think it's the same game plan. Now, Solomon Young is a better scorer than Condit. So when Solomon Young gets the ball, he automatically demands a double team. So he either has to score quick or be able to find his teammates for open shots. But they must get the switch. Bolton. Oh. No. Could not convert. For Baylor, get the ball to Adam Flagler and allow him to create. The floater, no. Blocking foul is called. It's on Tyler Harris, his fourth. I think what you're seeing right now speaks to, number one, the depth of Baylor, but number two, the unselfishness. Jared Butler's an All-American. Davion Mitchell's an All-American. Macy Oteague is up for the Jerry West Award. But Adam Flagler comes off the bench, and right now they're letting Adam Flagler take over this game and go to work. That's how unselfish this team is. You know, Scott Drew has said it. When it is somebody's night, like it's Flagler's night here, everyone does a great job of feeding that player. Some would try to get theirs. Yeah. But Butler, Mitchell, whoever it is, they want to see who's hot and make sure that they have the ball. Exactly. And it, it stems down from the leadership. I mean, Jared Butler, Macy O.T., they're, they're just great leaders. Three-point lead. Now Mitchell with the steal. Driving against Bolton. Flagler wide open. Picked up by Iowa State. Bolton leads the Cyclones with 21. Tyler Harris has 20. For sure, Bolton has to do a better job of taking care of the basketball, especially in crucial situations. Coleman lands off the screen. Give it to him. That's a triple to tie it at 68. It's a big shot. He's the one guy Steve Pearl wants shooting the ball right now. Yes, Tyler Harris has been hot, but Jalen Coleman lands has been consistent throughout the whole year, and consistency helps you win games. Coach Pearl wants him shooting the ball right now. Believe it or not, it's Coleman Land's first three tonight. He's one for four. T churning. And he banks it in. They put you on an island and force you to guard them one on one. Didn't think we'd have this much fun tonight. <laughs> hey, we knew it would be a close one. We didn't know it would be this close. Coleman Land's again. Leaning in against Butler, a foul is called. And for Butler, that'll be his fourth. Iowa State has to do a better job of, it, it, it's 11 seconds on the shot clock, it was 11 seconds on the shot clock. 19 seconds were wasted. You didn't do anything with the basketball. They have to do a better job of being able to get their offense started, initiated, and actually do something to put Baylor on their heels. Bolton with space, oh, erased by Vital. Out of bounds, Baylor ball. Mark Vidal, Mr. 9-5, right? Mr. 9-5 does it all, 6-4. Three crazy blocks today, only at 6-4. He's, no, uh, he's probably about an inch taller than me, I'm only 6-3. But does it all, plays hard, has the heart of a warrior. Pressure from Iowa State. Timeout, Scott Drew and Baylor. And Mark Vidal has three points, has played better as the season has gone along. It's almost like it woke him up in a sense. I yes. Mean, I think Brand said somehow he looked out of shape and stuff. I mean, he's showing right now. He That's not true. What do you say? He, Mark called it fake news. Yep, <laughs> that's right. Went right back at Fran. Got to love it.
Under two minutes to play, Baylor by two. Into the hands of Teague, 10 to shoot. Putting it up over Jackson. We got a better shot right like there. Iowa State again on the cusp of a victory in Big 12 play and against a top flight team. Timeout, Steve Prohm. Rashir Bowden just has to be better right now. I mean, you pick up your dribble, don't know who to pass it to, you're wasting five seconds. Waste Prohm. I'm getting the switch. I'm getting Mark Vidal off of Solomon Young. Then I'm looking to feed Solomon Young, and as soon as he touches, somebody's cutting, others are spotting up for the three. Bolton against Mitchell. This is fun. Five to shoot. Jackson has to put it up. Offline. That's just a terrible possession. You waited till eight seconds to bring Mark Vidal up. This the second best defender, one of the best defenders in the country, to bring him up and guard your, your, your player. That, that, that's a terrible possession right there. Inside 50 seconds. Butler against Coleman lands the scoop. Jared Butler is made for this moment. And Bolton fouled before the shot. Fouls on Mitchell, number two on Mitchell. With 33.9, you have to get a quick bucket, then foul immediately. You must score right here, because if you don't score right here, game's almost pretty much over. You must score right here and get a quick foul. Bolton to trigger in. Coleman lands against Butler. Taking too much time off Absolutely, the Bolton against Davion Mitchell. Taking Across the floor to Young. Time. Under 20 seconds, Butler the steal, and a foul at midcourt. Baylor swallowing up Iowa State defensively. They took way too much time on that possession, and like I said, it's because they do not have a point guard right here. In this situation, the point guard should have known we have to score quickly. Instead, they get a waste, another waste of possession, a turnover, putting Jared Butt to the free throw line. The game is pretty much over now. Butler at the line. Just two of four, but he knocks down the first. Jared Butler had just three points at halftime, and he has fired up now 16 in the game. You know, is it just me or has it been like a quiet 16? Absolutely. I feel like it's been a very quiet 16. Yes. Final 15 seconds, five-point game. In and out from Jackson. Put back by Young. Timeout with nine and a half seconds to play. It is a one-possession game. And, you know, I said the game was over earlier. I made all play, man. <laughs> Check it out. That's right. Coach Drew in the Five football. wide. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. We've seen this before. <laughs> It works, but oh my goodness. Butler into Teague, and the foul comes with nine seconds to go. I don't know why that play worked so well, but every single time the game got close, the game got really close, and it was down to the last 10 seconds. Coach Drew was always calling football and doing that inbounds play. Somebody gets open every single time. I don't know why that is, but it, it works. Some guys run the go route. Macy O.T. <laughs> ran a little curl underneath. <laughs> We'll stop her out. <laughs> Take with 12 points tonight. Knocks down the first. An 86% foul shooter on the season. Mm. So calm and a big moment. Two possession game. Harris puts it in. 3.6 left. 
Flagler gives it to Butler. And the foul with three and a ten. You know, Scott Drew wondered what exactly his team would look like. Again, their first practice coming out of COVID protocols was two days ago on Sunday. Said there was all kinds of rust. Guys were tired. It was like coming back from Christmas break. It was a return to basics. And, yeah, oh, two days later, you got to play a game in the Big 12. <laughs> Hey, but it's a testament to his team. His team fought down 17. Come, they come back. Don't take the lead till four minutes. That's a true testament. When you're in the NCAA tournament, this is liable to happen any game. So you have to be prepared for these moments, and these moments make your team stronger. Final seconds. Baylor is back. We hit that. Now that. He from half court went in by Bolton. The officials will check 